In this series of Medical Made Easy, we'll study about ECG. What is an ECG? ECG stands for electrocardiogram. It's a medical test that detects heart problems by measuring the electrical activity generated by the heart when it contracts. You must have heard people use the words electrodes and leads interchangeably. But are they really the same thing in true sense? Certainly not. An electrode is a conductive pad that is attached to the skin and enables recording of electrical current. Whereas an ECG lead is a graphical description of the electrical activity of the heart and it is created by analyzing several electrodes. In other words, each ECG lead is computed by analyzing the electrical currents detected by several electrodes. How did the leads come into being in the first place? Well, Enthoven recorded the first ECG in the world in the year 1903. As there were no adhesive electrodes or intensifying systems available at that time, the only way to contact the body was to place the extremities in a bucket of salt solution. Enthoven was able to produce a sufficient contact resistance to the body to make the first ECG visible with the help of a string galvanometer. Enthoven could then measure the tension between the right and left arm, that is lead 1, the right arm and left leg, that is lead 2, and the left arm and left leg, that is lead 3. The three limb electrodes 1, 2 and 3 form a triangle known as Enthoven's equilateral triangle at the right arm, left arm and the left leg. As Enthoven's leads were far apart from one another, Goldberger had the idea in 1942 to close this gap. The angle between leads 1 and 2, 2 and 3 and 2 and 1 is 120 degree. To improve the diagnosis, Goldberger thought it made sense to cut the angles in half, which he accomplished with the help of a resistor network. I'm now coming to the most commonly used 12-lead ECG. The 12-lead ECG combines the lead systems from Enthoven, Goldberger and Wilson, thereby providing information about vertical and horizontal axis. The 12-lead ECG is the gold standard for ECG diagnosis and is used for both resting and stress ECGs. In the 12 lead ECG system, there are 10 electrodes and 12 leads. You can now pause the video and memorize the location of the different leads. The leads are also subdivided according to their relation to the heart. Leads 2, 3 and AVF are inferior. Leads 1, AVL, V5 and V6 are called lateral leads. V1 and V2 are anterior, V3 and V4 are septal. V1, V2, V3 and V4 can together be called anterior septal. It will be easier for you to interpret the ECG if you remember the directions from which the various leads look at the heart. The six standard leads which are recorded from the electrodes attached to the limbs can be thought of as at looking at the heart in a vertical plane. The six V leads Look at the heart in the horizontal plane from the front and the left side. These are placed on the precordium. Now coming to the main point. You need to remember the specific ECG patterns produced by the specific leads. This will help you in answering questions. You may pause the video and try to remember the patterns. What is the cardiac axis? The electrical activity of the heart starts at the sinoatrial node and then it spreads to the atrioventricular node. It then spreads down the bundle of his and then Purkinje fibers to cause ventricular contraction. Whenever the direction of electrical activity is towards a lead, you get a positive deflection in that lead. Whenever the direction of electrical activity is away from a lead, you get a negative deflection in that lead. Cardiac axis gives us an idea of the overall direction of electrical activity. Now what is an axis deviation? In healthy individuals, you would expect the axis to lie between minus 30 and 90 degrees. Right axis deviation involves the direction of depolarization 
being distorted to the right that is between 90 degrees and 180 degree the most common cause of right axis deviation is right ventricular hypertrophy extra right ventricular tissue results in a stronger electrical signal being generated by the right side of the heart this causes the deflection in lead 1 to become a negative and the deflection in lead AVF or 3 to become positive. Similarly, left axis deviation involves the direction of depolarization being distorted to the left, that is between minus 30 degree and minus 90 degree. This results in the deflection of lead 3 becoming negative this is only considered significant if the deflection of lead 2 also becomes negative. Left axis deviation is usually caused by conduction abnormality. Therefore, we can now see that there will be characteristic deviations from normal in the different leads, which will indicate that there is some kind of defect in the heart. The takeaway message from this lecture is that we need to know the normal patterns in order to identify the abnormal patterns and therefore answer the questions. The remaining topics will be covered in the next video.